everyone and welcome to my channel if you're new thanks for tuning in so today I will be going over a tutorial of how to apply acrylic um, so there you see me I push gently push back the cuticles with a cuticle pusher and right now I'm going in with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick it's a hundred grit foul um, usually you would not want to use a 100 grit file on your client because it could split their natural nail, but this is a silicone hand. So you want to use a 240 grit file on your client. So here you see me going in with a fine sanding band that I got from my local beauty supply store or nail supply store rather. And I always shape from the bottom and I go up. And the reason why I do that is it's just a technique that I was taught to start from the bottom and work my way up. Now, you can go around the cuticle first and go to the bottom, but I go from bottom to up. So whatever technique works best for you. So I am dusting the nails there with a dust brush. Um, typically on a client, I like to use this nylon brush, the blue one because you can sanitize them and it prevents cross-contamination um, from having the dust brush and using it on everyone and you can't sanitize those so i went in with a lint-free wipe and some swipe and i clean the nails technically you would not want to put that on a client's skin so now i am sizing the nail tip with the natural nail making sure it fits sidewall to sidewall. And the tips that I'm using are the universal tips from Not Polish and the KDS glue, which I'm very, very in love with. I love those two products when it comes to doing nails, okay? So I'll take a little bit of glue and put the nail tip at the, um, where the free edge meets and yeah, so you wait for that to dry a little bit. And I'm taking the Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick Foul and I am removing the ledges from the nail, the nail tip on the side and shaping the nail tip to the desire that the client likes, okay? And you know, a lot of people don't do it first off, but I like to do it because it helps prevent, it helps me to keep fouling at a minimal at the end. Okay, if that makes sense to you guys. Um, and I keep my nail file straight as you can see, just so I can keep that shape how the client wants it. And you see me also going back and forth and that's just to prevent from favoring one side when shaping. So yeah, I'm going back and forth and just making sure that that shape is perfect. So there I am dusting again. And now I'm taking the fine sanding band, which I have it at a speed of about um, three to 4,000 RPMs. And I'm removing that ledge so it's basically like I'm blending in the tip with the natural nail because that is going to help with retention when you're prepping. Okay. I'm taking another lint free wipe and some swipe and I'm basically dehydrating the nail. And as you can see, it left a little white surface on there. You want to look for that and then go in with your um, bond primer or whatever you're using so i'm using the young nails um the young nails protein bond and i'm applying two coats of that and i started from the bottom and worked my way up just to avoid flooding the cuticle so after that dries um that's when you start your acrylic application but today i'm going to be showing you a liquid to powder ratio and how to achieve the perfect bead. So as you can see there, I dipped my brush in the 
monomer and I turned my brush. I don't know if you guys saw that, but you can always go back and rewind that part and look at it. Okay. You'll see me do it several times, so I don't think it'll be anything you miss. Okay. So there I have a too wet of a bead. And if I try to go in my powder and get that, it's going to drip as you can see. That's something you don't want to do because then you'll make a mess. You'll have it all on the client's skin and you don't know if they're irritated to acrylic. So you want to avoid that. Then that's a too dry bead. If you don't have enough monomer on your brush, then the bead will be too dry. Okay. So you always want to make sure you're cleaning your brush in between and make sure you don't have acrylic buildup in your brush, okay? So the thing I like to do is turn the brush right there, as you saw, tap, tap, tap three times and wait to, for the bead to pulmerize. And then you go in and you place the bead, okay? And these were larger beads that you see me pointing at. And I'm gonna show you each bead that you can get you can get a large medium or small bead so now i'm going in and i'm showing you a medium bead that you can get that one was a little bigger on the big side because uh, i had grabbed a little more than what i should but this will be how you create a medium bead and as you can see my brush is clean i don't have no acrylic buildup okay so i'm going in and getting some of the monomer off my brush, tapping twice, waiting for the bead to pulmerize, and there you have a medium bead, okay? Doing it again, tap, tap, waiting for it to pulmerize, and then you go and place your bead, okay? So this is a technique that if you guys are struggling with your liquid to powder ratio. This is a technique that you can practice at home until you're able to get it down packed, okay? Trust me, we all as nail techs have went through this. Um, it's not easy, but once you practice, it will become more easier, okay? So I turn my brush, I tap twice, wait for the bead to pulmerize, and I place it on the nail. Okay, so now I'm going to go and show you a smaller bead. So with a smaller bead, you will want to tap once. Okay, and you wait for it to pulmerize and you go and place your bead. And I was out of focus there, guys, so I'm so sorry. So I'm going to show you the steps again. Drain most of the monomer off. Okay, all the way to the bottom near where I was pointing tap once and you have a small bead okay place it on the nail go back in again just to clean your brush out drain all the way to the end as you see me pointing tap once in your powder wait for it to pulmerize and place the bead so if you guys can get that technique down packed i I rest assured, guys, you will be able to ace this thing with acrylic application. It's not as hard as you may think it is. It's actually very easy, but you just have to uh, you have to practice these steps. Otherwise, your application will be on the client's skin, flooding the cuticle, or you can um, have bulky applications okay and you don't want your application to be bulky okay so now i am going to go in and show you when you dip your brush in and you have acrylic on both sides that is a big no-no as you can see i was saying no <laughs> you don't want to do that you don't want to drag it either okay because when you drag it you don't have enough monomer on there for it to be a, a complete application okay so 
I'm going to show you when you drag it, acrylic ends up getting on the back of the brush also, just as if you were dipping it. Okay. So when you go in and you tap it the way that I'm showing you to, you'll see that there's no acrylic on the back of the brush and your brush remains clean. Okay. I'm going to show you again. You love always level out your acrylic powder, tap, 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 and you see no acrylic is on the back of your brush. You only want it on the front of your brush only. Okay. That prevents your brush from having caked up acrylic in it. So now I'm going to show you the actual application on the hand. And you wait for it to palmerize, you place it, hold it, drag it down, push in your sides and use the body of your brush to slowly or gently walk it down. Um, in my case, I was in a warm climate, so I had to move a little quicker than what I was supposed to um, for me showing you guys this video. So I do apologize, but you can always go back and watch it over and over until you are able to understand the te technique, okay? So you always want to, if you have to drain the back of your brush as I just did there, to get to the bottom where you have a smaller space to work with, you can do that as well, okay? And the whole point is that you wanna make sure you're putting the um, acrylic on smoothly and you're cleaning up your sides. Making sure your brush does not dry out is very important as well. You don't want your brush to dry out because it can cake up again with acrylic. Okay. So here I am and I'm going in. I'm going in with a bead, placing it a hairline under the cuticle, pushing in my sides, and I'm going to gently pull it down, okay? And when you do that, as you can see, it's helping me to create my apex. And I'll take a little bit and just Fill in the gaps there because you don't want to leave any open gaps. That can be a way for water to get in there. And you don't want water to get down in any open cracks because it can cause lifting and it can cause greenies. Okay. Where the client's nail, I had a client who her nails were green. She liked to wear nails so much, but with her going to the nail shop, they were not sealing the cuticles and she had greenies. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do nails when they have greenies, um, but you just wanna be careful um, to try to avoid that and tell them, you know, um, to make sure that they're getting their nails done at least every two weeks to avoid, um, if they have lifting after that, to avoid water getting trapped under there and the moisture growing into a little bacteria okay so i don't have a method some people have one bead method two bead methods three bead methods um i don't have a method whatever it takes for me to get the acrylic on there and make it look good that's what i do so i'm showing you there that i need a little bit more acrylic there at the bottom because you always want to look at your nail and make sure that all the spaces are filled in and you have no lumps or bumps or humps okay so now on the ring finger i'm going to show you what not to do okay and like i said it was a little warm in the room i was in so um, I was trying to move slow to show you, but I had to end up working faster than what I wanted to. Okay. 
So I place that first bead. Now I'm going in with the second bead and this is where you don't want to do this. Now my brush was too wet and you see how runny it is right there. So in a case like that, which you had wanted to do was you wanted to drain the back of your brush. Okay. If you feel like you ever got a too wet of a bead, always place your brush down on the back of it and drain some of the monomer and then go and place your bead on the nail. Now with this one here, I placed it in the right area, but it was not enough acrylic. So then in this case, you're going to have a flat nail. As you can see, there is no structure to the nail. And when you have no structure to the nail, flat nails do not really look good to me. I don't know about what you guys think, but flat nails, bulky nails, they don't look good, you guys. So it's about knowing your consistency when you're working with acrylic. You have to know the consistency when you get in each zone of the nail. So what I mean by zones is you have the free edge, you have the apex, and you have the cuticle. Those are the three zones that you have to pay attention to when you go and you place acrylic on the nails, okay? And you always want to make sure that you're not placing any acrylic on the skin. Um, you're cleaning up your cuticle area. Um, as you can see there, that nail was still too flat. So whatever it takes for you to have to go and build your apex up a little bit, go for it, you know, until you're able to come up with being able to do one bead methods, two bead methods or three bead methods. But um, yeah, you see right there, the acrylic got on the skin and you don't want that because you don't want your client to break out, to get topical dermatitis or anything from the chemicals you're using. Okay. So on the middle finger here, I'm going to show you another thing, what not to do. And as I was saying, guys, the acrylic was setting fast because I was in um, a warmer room. Okay. So when you're applying acrylic, you just got to make sure your liquid to powder ratio is good. So there I was showing you a bead again where the liquid to powder ratio was not good. And I end up having to wipe off a lot of my product. And that's another thing you want to avoid. Okay. And oh, guys, I forgot to mention the brush that I'm using is from Nail House. Um, and it's the size 14 Kalinsky brush, a really, really great brush. It's really, really pretty. So if you ever get time, go and check out their website, nailhouse.com with different products that they have. Okay. So now I'm placing that last bead below the cuticle. Now this is where you can go wrong as well. You see how it ended up being stuck right there because like I said I was in a warmer climate and I just wanted to show you guys what that looks like okay you want to avoid that if you can but you can always go back over it like I'm doing here in this video I'm going back over it and voila it was able to blend very perfectly right there okay and constantly wiping in your sides as you see now I'm going to show you a bead that was too wet. That bead is too wet up by the cuticle. It should have been a little bit more drier than that. So that could cause lifting around the cuticles if you're not careful. Okay. So those two nails, the ring finger and the middle finger were big mistakes that you can do as a beginner nail tech when you're applying it to the nails. Okay. So always be careful of that. It's better to practice on a silicone hand like I have first before 
getting with um, actual clients. Or if you don't have that, you can practice on family if they don't mind. That'll be great too. Okay. So on the index finger. Um, yeah, guys, I was trying to <laughs> work my best ability but it was it was setting so fast and usually would not polish um, their acrylics um, give you time to work with. That's what I love about that. It's a uh, be beginner friendly. So I would suggest it. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but I would suggest it if you are struggling to work quickly with um, nail products. OK. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys continue watching me uh, finish this application and I'll be back. So now at this point here, I am going to go in with the McCart Pro. They're clear and I'm going to just cap the nails. So when it goes for me to foul, I won't be fouling off any of the colored acrylic. Okay, so I'll let you guys watch this process and I'll be back again. Okay, so now we're going to test the nails to hear that clicking sound and that just indicates that the nails are dry and they're ready for fouling. Um, so you're going to see me have control there with holding the client's nail because you don't want their nail to wiggle. Otherwise, it can hurt and cause discomfort to the client. Okay, so I'm going to also show you that underneath the nail you want to make sure that is straight you don't want to leave that like that um, because it doesn't look good guys for one and for two it can get snagged on if a client is doing something it can get snagged on and it can rip that nail off so you want to avoid having any um, ledges or rough edges that are not fouled straight if you can guys that's important okay so like i said i'm going and i'm fouling to get that crisp perfect shape and i'm fouling on both sides to prevent favoring one side okay 
you want to make sure that you do this step and you do not want to skip this step at all because it's going to make the your nails look like a perfectionist. You know, like, oh, their nails are so pretty. They're prettily shaped and everything. So you want to make sure of that, okay? So I'm going to let you watch this process. So here I'm showing you with the e-file, you can also go in and shape um, underneath the nail as well to cut down on um, having to use a hand file as well. So here I'm showing you um, when you use your nylon dust brush to brush down instead of up to prevent it the to prevent the dust going back into the cuticles so now i'm going in with my five in one bit from panna i got this off of amazon you guys so i will leave this link down below and i'm just going and making sure that i am flushing um the cuticles where the natural nail meets and giving it that very defined shape that i want and you're just gonna do that with each nail, okay? So I am going to be quiet <laughs> and let you guys watch this. Typically, I have a lot of people to say, hey, why don't you take your nail file and drill straight across? But as you can see, the nail file skipped because the nail is too long to go straight back and forth like that. You know what I'm saying? So typically when you're filing long nails like this, it's best that you do it up and down. Um, versus doing it across because you can do what's called going around the world. And if it decides to skip and nick your client, you can cut them, you can scare them, you can scare yourself and you want to avoid that. So on longer nails, I tend to go up and down vertically with the hand file, with the e-file. So now I'm going back in with the hand file and giving it that final crisp look, okay, on each nail because sometimes the e-file can throw the shape back off again um, when you're fouling. It, it can happen, guys, okay? So now I'm taking the um, hand and looking at it from the client's perspective, making sure I did not favor one side um, because sometimes we can't see it on our end okay so now i'm gonna take the tammy taylor peeling stick and just basically foul over the nail i like this process a lot because it ensures that i am getting any rough edges that i may have missed with the hand foul and making sure the application is very smooth as pos possible 
okay so I'm gonna go over each nail and just roughing it up like that and after this process you're gonna see me buff the nails out and I will let you go ahead and watch it So after you see me um, finish buffing the nails, I am going to take, again, lint-free wipe and swipe and clean the nails. Remember not to get the swipe on the client's actual skin, okay? In this case, it's just a practice hand, so it's okay, okay? So I like to um, do this, this technique here that I learned from Young Nails, where you take the protein bond and you can, um, if you're getting ready to apply gel polish or nail art, you can take that protein bond and just put a layer on the nail before you go in to polish or do nail art. And what it does is it gets rid of the lines or ridges in the nail. So once you do that, you wait for it to dry and you go in with the nail art. So the nail art I'm going to be doing today is just some lines all over the place. Um, I thought of this as a simple fall nail art that's very easy, very cute and simple. So I'll go ahead and I'll let you watch this.
Okay, so now you're gonna see me go in with um, the Glossed from Not Polish. I abso absolutely love this um, top coat as it's a non-wipe, um, so it doesn't have it in in inhibition layer or that sticky layer. You just apply it and you go right in with the cuticle oil and that's it. You don't have to wipe anything off of it. Okay. So you really, really want to um, make sure that you're applying enough top coat to get down in between the cracks and the crevices of the nail art. Okay. Cause you don't want any chipping or anything like that. And you see me go in and wipe the sides so you won't lose the shape. So here I'm using some of the cuticle oil from Kiara Sky. It's the natural scent. It smells really good. And you're just basically gonna massage it into the client's skin. And yeah, it's I really, really love it, guys, okay? And here you see me just going in with some cute little nail jewelry that, you know, you can put on, your client can put on if they have it, just to make their nail art pop. You know, that's what it's basically for. Okay, so this was the final look. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you guys have learned a ton and I will see you next time. Bye bye.